Let's take a look at an exponential uh, mathematical model when we're given any two points. Uh, when we're given any two points, I've used uh, the notation t1, y1, t2, y2. Now, what we'll do is we'll substitute in the t1 and take a look at what happens with y1. So when we do that, we see our uh, c, our um, initial amount, that occurs when t is 0, because when t is 0, e to the 0 is 1, and you get, well, the y coordinate when t is 0 is c. So c shows up in both of these. Now here I'll have t2 and y2. Solving those both for that same c uh, gives us something that's always true. Now as we follow along with the algebra, pause the video and uh, solve for k. As we look at this, as we solve for k, I've gone ahead and done that now, so you can pause the video and, and go through that, but we arrive at a statement of k that's always true for any two points. Well, with the caveat, provided t1 is not equal to t2. I didn't write that down because we know that would be undefined, but this is our relative growth rate when it's positive, when k is positive, and it's our relative decay rate when k is negative. But the math will work itself out, so it always is this. And this is actually easy to remember because doesn't it look a lot like that slope formula of a straight line? m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It looks a lot like that. Of course, we have our natural log. This is not the same thing as the slope, but because it looks a lot like it, it's easy to remember it. It's always going to be this. So this is a good job for our calculator. Let's grab a calculator and create a little program that will give us k when we're given any two points. Now there's a little uh, secret I like to share. When I'm creating a program, I take a look at my calculator, and depending on what I'm doing, uh, I'll pick variables, letters on the keyboard. Um, to correspond to different things. So what I like to do when I'm de dealing with a couple of points, t1, y1, t2, y2, I pick out variables that are next to each other on the calculator. So you can see here I've got q and r and v and w. I'm going to pick those and I'm just going to make a note right on here. You can see how I've ghosted it out. I planned this ahead of time. q and r. So q is going to be my t1 and r is going to be my y1. And then I'll use a v and a w. Now you truly can pick anything you want, but you can see it's just convenient because they're next to each other here and here. Now y2 is w, y1 is r, so I have something that looks like this, t2 is v, and t1 is q, like this. Now I'm going to put the parentheses in like the calculator would um, show it, because I'm making a calculator program. This is going to equal k. It looks like a good variable to store too. I also want to be very careful that this is the numerator and this is the denominator. So I'm going to put all of that in there uh, right now and then I'm going to grab my calculator. Alright, so I've got my calculator and what you'll see here, I'll just use the emulator, this is called our home screen and I'm going to make a program. The first thing I'm going to do in the program, I'm going to clear the home screen. That way if I'm executing the program while I've been working on something else, it'll just clear that for me. So let's push the program button. I'll try to move the cursor around so you can clearly see it on the emulator. Program, and what we're going to do, you can see I've got some other ones in here already. If uh, I need to edit one of the existing ones, I can go here. I'm going to create a new one, so I'll just arrow to the right, create new. I need to call it something, so I think what I'll do is I'll call it uh, exponential rate. There we go. You can see the alpha lock is on, so you can name it something else if you like. I'll hit enter, 
you're going to see the colon. This is where I'm going to put clear home right away. So I push the program button. You'll be pushing this a lot. And I'm going to look for something that says clear home. I start most of my programs with this. There we go. We've made a program, and what it does, it clears the home. Next, I'm going to prompt for the information, the QR, that point, uh, that first point, and then the VW. So I'm going to prompt. Now to do this, I can just use the letters. Alpha lock is not on. You can see the cursor doesn't show a, a capital A. So I need to push alpha and then Q. There's the Q. And I'm going to put a uh, R next to it. Alpha R. There we go. And I'm going to prompt again. And this time VW. Like that. And then I'll hit enter. So your calculator now knows what the two points are. And I'm going to next then state what k is equal to. Now remember k is equal to the natural log of w minus the natural log of r divided by the quantity v minus q. I'll just get that into the calculator. And to do that, I'll just start with a parenthesis. Just make sure I have the numerator sealed up. Natural log of w minus the natural log of r two parentheses here, so I have the numerator uh, sealed up, divided by, and then I'll have parentheses here where I write the V minus Q. Close parentheses. And because we had called that K, it seems appropriate to store it to K. Here's our store button. Store, and then alpha K. So now the calculator knows what k is. We could display what k is uh, pretty easily like this. Program button display alpha k. Now let's see if it's going to work. I think we can make this look a lot nicer. So we're not done yet, but this is a quick, easy way to write a program. Let's see if it's going to work. So I'm going to go second quit. I'm going to call up program number two. I can arrow to it or hit two. Now when I hit enter, it'll clear the home screen. And it asks me Q. Well, let's use an example problem. Um, let's use these two points, 1, 5, and 5, 2, to test it out. What we're looking for is k, and it's given it to us right here. Now, the life of a programmer will be to refine and, and edit your program to make it um, more user-friendly, which I think we can do here. Well, our program's working, but we can do better. I'm going to take a look at the statements for c. Well, our calculator now knows y2 and t2, or y1 and t1, so we could use either one of these expressions that are equal to t, uh, c. Uh, since my pen is pointing to this one, I'm just going to use this one right here. Uh, this is a w. This is an e to the k. And I remember our calculator knows what k is now, so I'll just write k. And then t2, well, that's v. And that's what... Yeah, well, that's what C is going to be equal to. So equals C. Look at that. Now, it's kind of a messy little scribble here. But we could put that code into our um, calculator. Let's give, give that a shot. Program. Now I'm going to edit this number 2. And I think what I'm going to do is, before I display what k is, I'm going to find c. So I can hit second, insert, and what I'll do is I'll type in a 
new line of code. Just a nice little helpful hint um, to not have to delete and rewrite. So I need alpha w divided by e to the k times v, like so. Now I'll put a parenthesis there for the exponent. Remember it knows k is negative, so when it's calculating this it already will put that in there. Let's store this. Well, this is what c is equal to, so that seems appropriate to store it to c. And I will just arrow down now, and I'm going to display Well, let's display C, then we'll know what C is equal to. Second quit takes us to the home screen. When we run our program, you'll notice I hit enter there. If it was previously run on the home screen, it'll run it again when you hit enter. So it saves you a quick step or two. So I'm going to try the 1, 5, 5, 2, and it gives me both K and C, which is kind of fun. Our program still isn't done yet. We can do better, but I want to show you something that's kind of neat. I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to type in this mathematical model right here, C E to the K T. There we go, C, E to the K, T. And then I'm going to go to the table. The table feature is right here, second table, and I can put in uh, information that I want. Delete, delete, delete. Um, so I'll go ahead and do this. I'll put in a 1, and I should be getting a 5, and then I put in a 5, and I should be getting a 2. Um, but I'm not, so I need to go take a look at what happened there. Let's go take a look why that didn't work. Y equals. Alright, so the reason that didn't work is on our piece of paper I have t as the independent variable. In your calculator it's going to use x. So let's take a quick look at that. t in your calculator is a stored variable. It has some number. To it. But if we want the independent variable, we'll just simply modify that with an x. Now we're good to go. Now that independent variable is x. Let's go back to our table, see if it's working now. 1, 5, 5, 2. Uh, here's a quick little challenge. When I put in 0, what number should show up? That's right, 6.287. Now if you want to see that 6.287, 7 to a little closer, you can arrow over to it. And you can see there's your initial amount. So we know this exponential model is working. Uh, we've got all of our info that's all fun. But let's go back and make our program even better. I'm going to edit my program. This is the life of a coder. Now, one of the things that would be nice is when I use this. Um, before the prompt, if it would you know display that q comma r is the ordered pair, uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to arrow down to where it says prompt, and I'm going to hit second insert and enter. And what I would like to do is I'd like to hit program and then display because I want to display just a visual. Uh, an image. So to do that, I'll hit this green button and then the quotations because now it's going to display text. And I want the text to read like this alpha q, comma, alpha r. Now this is a little more than just aesthetics. It really clears it up. That say, says q is the independent variable and then r is the dependent variable specific to one another. I'll do the same thing for VW. Let's see how we can do that. We'll arrow over 
right here and then I'm going to hit second insert and enter and I'll do that same thing display oh I see I forgot something let me fix that to put a quotation at the end you'll notice I just arrowed back up there I saw oops forgot it program display quotations which will be around it and here I'm going to put the ordered pair VW. And with a quotation. That's going to look good. All right, so now it's going to work nicely. Let's go try it out. Now I can hit enter and it'll call it up because it just now you see it says a QR. Okay, so I'm going to do the 1 5. And the five two. Oh, that's looking good. I like it. But I think it should display what K and C are also. So let's go ahead and do that. Second quit. Uh, I guess I don't need. I don't need to go second quit. I'll just go program edit, and then call up editing number two. So let's put a display. program display I want it to display the text K so you got it quotations around the K then as soon as it does that it'll tell us what K is I'm gonna do the same thing with C Again, one, five, five, two. There, it gives me K and C, and looks great. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, a couple more just calculator hints and tricks. Of course, we'll remember we have to have X for our independent variable, and when you go to the table. If your table doesn't allow you to put things in, we just we can just set that table. Table set. Make sure your independent variable is set to ask. Uh, the default from factory is auto, but works better when you have it in ask. So then you can just go to the table and plug in values. What do you what happens when uh, t is two? Of course, on your table it shows x, but when t is two, oh, it's that. Nah, nobody asked that, so I'll get rid of it. <clears throat> Now if we go to a graph, we can see what the graph looks like too. Just pick an appropriate window. I'm going to pick something like this. This looks fine. I'll just hit graph. There's our exponential decay model. Second, calculate value, which is number one. What happens when it's one? Of course that's five. How about when it's five? That's two. How about zero? That's at 6.28. So you get the mathematical models graph, which is kind of fun. Oh, if you've had enough, you can shut the video down. But if you want a little bit more, I've got more tricks up my sleeve. So one of the things I'm going to do now, I've got the program working. Second quick gets me to my home screen. I can clear this out. Um, can your calculator do um, a regression analysis with those two points? Because recall, we had these two points right here, 1, 5, 5, 2. Um, well, actually, yeah. So this won't be programming. This will be a regression analysis. I'll just show it to you just as a little bonus. So to get this information into the calculator, we'll push Stat, Edit, and I'm going to clear this. There's stuff in here, so I'll hit just go to the arrow up, Clear. I don't need to clear everything. I'll just clear the L1 and L2. Clear, and then I'll hit enter. There we go. I got to clear and enter. So in L1, I'll put my x1, and then the 5 is the other x value, or actually in our story problem, the t value. Now over in L2, those are the y coordinates, and 
the one that was partnered with one it was one comma five and then five comma two like that so if you've done a regression analysis before you've got your x's here and your y's here stat calculate and I'm looking for an exponential model there's one X list, Y list, that looks good. Store regression equation. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll store it to um, Y2. Incidentally, you have a little uh, quick feature here. F4 will get you to your Y values. All right, so we'll calculate. Looking good. Hey, you recognize those numbers? Mm, well, kind of, right? Hmm, so what gives? What you'll notice is when we used our calculator, I've got a one right down here, we've got a K value and we've got a C value. Now I notice I, when I did the regression analysis, that's what this one is right here, the regression analysis, and that doesn't look the same as what we did when we um, used our program, the 6.28, but you'll notice here the base is E, here the base is 0.79527. The exponent is t. The exponent is t here also, but what's nice when we have the base e, it's our natural base, uh, we can clearly see this uh, exponential model. So will this one look like that one? Um, we can certainly make it look that way if we like. So let's take a look at how we can do that. And then this will be it. It uh, will be done after this. I'm just going to show you some fun little helpful techniques. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write y equals 6.287. I'm going to round just a little bit. And then I'm going to say times e to the natural log of 0 0.79527. I'm going to write this one all out because let's see if it matches. Nice. And that's to the t. There we go. Now you'll notice e to the natural log will cancel each other out. So I really have the same thing minus my... Uh, rounding error here. So I'm going to take the natural log of this number. Let's see what that's equal to. Uh, my calculator's not showing up very well. Let me grab a different one. Yeah, this one shows up a little better clear. So I'm going to take the natural log of And there we go. That actually brings us back to this right here. So we were able to see that it's all the same. Now, sometimes when we're building these mathematical models, we'll round, you know, round appropriately. I just was kind of hasty here as I was showing. It's all the same mathematical model. All right, we're about done here, but you know we did store that to y2, so you'll notice it shows up in here and in here. If you graph them, I'm going to graph the one right over the other one. You can see it's the same exact thing. All right, that's enough.